All right, ND filters. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, uh, yeah, much better. All right, ND filters today. How do we use them? Why do we use them? And how do we set them up on the camera? All right, in today's video, we're gonna talk about ND filters. We're gonna talk about what they are, why we use them, how to actually calculate which ND filter you need. And then lastly, we're gonna show you how to install them. So let's get to it. All right, I'm sure you've seen these boxes right here for cell or whatever it is. These are ND filters, and a lot of people are confused about ND filters and why we use them. And the primary reason, quite frankly, is for videography. Videography, we're going to get a lot of light coming into the sensor, and we need to stick with a certain number of uh, shutter speed. And the shutter speed typically is going to be double your frame rate, double your frame per second. So if we're shooting at 30 frames per second, we need to have our shutter speed at 1 over 60. 1 over 60 means that there's probably going to be too much light coming into the sensor. Just like it is right now it's a pretty bright day and we have to remove that amount of light this is where the ND neutral density filter comes in and neutral density simply means that the color is going to remain the same all the way across what happens is we're just reducing the amount of light coming into the sensor for photography you can also use them in order to do long exposures maybe you want to have an object in motion and create this motion blur in the background on your photos because you want to do a longer exposure one second two second maybe even ten seconds this will really help Help you slow that down. If you're doing regular photography, you can do waterfall photos, for example, where the water is going to be nice and blurry. That's all coming from these ND filters right here. So before we put the ND filter on, we have to look at the numbers and we have to determine which one we want to use. These in this box right here, we have an ND4, ND8, ND16. You can get ND32, 64, 128. There's a lot of different ones and they're all in increments like this where you multiply them two, three, four times to get to that number. So let's find out how we're going to determine which ND filter we need to in put order in. to figure out if we need an ND filter, what size of ND filter we need, is to go into your app without a filter. You'll notice that the drone does not have a filter on it. And at the bottom right corner, here we're using the DJI Fly app, but it's true for every other app. We are in auto mode, so you notice that this is exposed correctly. This is not the goal. We want to set up in manual mode, so I'm going to tap on the auto mode right here, or whatever you have in your app in order to get into manual mode. And now you notice that it's overexposed. There's a reason, is because we don't have a filter on there. So we're going to go first to the ISO. ISO, we're going to choose the lowest number we can. Here it's 100. I'm going to keep it at 100. Don't set anything to auto in here, just 100. And then we're going to go, if you have an f-stop, I'm using the Air 2S, there is no f-stop. If you have an f-stop, set it up to whatever you want. I recommend around 5.6. 6.3 right around that range maybe even 7.1 just so you have enough leadway on both sides to make small adjustments here we're stuck with the aperture at f2.8 so I'm going to stay with this and then the next thing is we're going to set our shutter speed and this is where everything happens we're going to go until we are properly exposed and you notice I have zebras on here I'm taking away the zebras this looks to be pretty well exposed it looks like we are at zero on my MM, which is my exposure compensation, I'm at zero. So that's perfect. This is properly exposed. Now you're gonna say, what now? I'm at one over 1600, one over 1600 of a shutter speed. How do I find the ND filter from here? Well, I'm gonna use my little trusty calculator that's in my cell phone. So we were at one over 1600. So I'm gonna type in here 1600, and we're gonna divide this number by our goal shutter speed. Our goal shutter speed, because we're recording at 30 frames per second, then our goal shutter speed is 60. If you were recording at 60 frames per second, your goal shutter speed should be 120, 1 over 120. So here we go from 1600 all the way down to 60, and I'm going to do equal, and I get 26. 26, what's the closest filter that I have available? I have ND8, uh-uh. ND16, eh, pretty close, but not enough. ND32. In this case, I'm going to go with ND32 because this is the closest value that I calculated with my phone. This is it. Let's put on an ND32 right now and see what happens. Okay, now that we put the ND32, let's head back to our settings and we're going to type on the shutter speed and guess what we're going to do? We're going to bring it to 1 over 60. And look, as we do this, what happens? We get almost a perfect exposure. And this is exactly what we wanted. It's a little bit on the dark side. Remember, we calculated an ND filter that was a little bit smaller than what we had in here. Now you have two options here. You can either uh, 
change the ND filter, not really something that we want to do. Or you can bump up your ISO maybe to ISO 200 and then keep tweaking. Obviously, if you have a way to change the f-stop, then it's going to be pretty easy. You're just going to tweak your f-stop a little bit, one or two stops on either side, and then get the perfect image. But this should give you really good exposure, and this is how you calculate your ND filter. Now, you may be wondering, why in the world are we paying for all these filters? Why can't we just stick with 1600 on our shutter speed? And the answer is, it's not going to give you that motion blur that's going to be uh, acceptable, that's going to look good, that's going to give you that cinematic look. If we stay at 1600 and you have an object moving in there, it's going to be extremely sharp. And not only that, but you can also risk getting some jelly effect on your drone, something that you don't want to do. That's why we're using ND filters. Now that we determine the type of ND filter that we want to use, let's go ahead and put them on the drone. And all of this is going to really depend on the type of drone that you have. The first one here, we have the Air 2S from DJI. And this one, very much like its uh, little brother, which is the Mavic 2 Pro, they have the same way of uh, installing the filter. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go right here and we are going to simply hold the gimbal and we're going to rotate the gimbal, the filter just like this and take it out. You are rotating the filter counterclockwise and it's going to come off. Now interestingly on this drone right here this filter is uh, not a filter it's not even a piece of, uh, met of, um, of glass it's basically just an empty filter. Now in here what we have is I have a box with a whole bunch of different filters for the Air 2S specifically. Obviously you're going to have to buy the filter exactly for that drone and based on what we just calculated then we are going to be putting the filter on. So I'm going to grab the ND16 right now and we're going to close the box and I'm going to put it on very simply by it doesn't matter which um, on which side you put it on you're just going to clip it and then turn clockwise until it clicks. And once it clicks, then it's basically in place and ready to go. Now we can turn on the drone and get started. Now let's take a look on the Mavic 2 Pro side, then I have a slightly different filter. Okay, so on this one, on the Mavic 2 Pro, what we have is I have a variable ND filter, which is a little bit different. And there's a reason I wanted to show it to you guys is because it's all of the filters at once. And this is something that I get from Moment. Moment is a pretty awesome company. And what you can see in here is this will rotate. It's a variable ND filter. It goes from two all the way to five. From two all the way to five here, we can change it. And we're going to install it exactly the same way. We're going to turn this counterclockwise right here. And then we're going to remove this. And then we're going to push this and then put it in clockwise. And then we will be able to lock it in place and set our ND filter before we take off and be able to, um, well, to get the proper filter right on there. For the Hotel Evo 2, what we have is a filter that screws in. And you have to go for quite a while, as you can see. It rotates, rotates, rotates for quite a long time. And then we're going to take the clear filter that's on here and take it out and then put the new filter and do the same thing the opposite direction. When we're done with this, then we're ready to go. So this one is very simple. And then the FPV drone is even easier. On the FPV, all you have to do is remove the current gimbal that's on there. Mine is a little bit dusty right now. And then simply take that filter and pop it in. Now you're gonna have to hold the gimbal a little bit when you do that. Don't push too hard on there. And then just put it in place. Make sure it's kind of uh, parallel with the top right here. The top part right here should be parallel. And then, uh, then you're all set, that's it. It doesn't come off, it's on there pretty snug. So you don't have to worry about it coming off even though it's not, uh, it's not locked in or anything, it's ready to go. I hope you found this video informational. As always, you can go down in the video description. We put a bunch of links in there for you to find the perfect filter for your drone. And as always, leave your comments. We love talking to you guys. And if you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe so you can get notifications when we put out new videos. See you guys next time. <laughs>